हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द मेगा रिविजन फॉर द ए आर एस नेट एग्जामिनेशन फॉर द एनवायरमेंटल साइंस पेपर सो यू ऑल विल बी थिंकिंग दैट फ्रॉम हुयर टू डाउनलोड द प्रीवियस एस क्वेश्चन हाउ टू प्रिपेयर बट आई वुड सजेस्ट यू दैट फोकस ऑन वट आर द थिंग्स अवेलेबल एंड लीव द रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स विच इज नॉट अवेलेबल येस द थिंग्स विच आर अवेलेबल आर द मेटेरियल्स विच कैन बी रिवाइज द मोस्ट एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन विच कैन बी डन सो दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज देर आर वेरी चांसेज दैट द क्वेश्चन विल कम सिमिलरली वट वी आर प्रिपेयरिंग एंड आई एम श्योर दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी हेल्पफुल सो विदाउट मच डिले लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड फॉर टूडेज रिविजन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वुड लाइक टू से दैट देर इज अ प्ले लिस्ट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ मेगा रिविजन फॉर द एनवायरमेंटल साइंस मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स येस देर आर टोटल सिक्स पार्ट्स इन दिस सीरीज पार्ट वन पार्ट टू पार्ट थ्री पार्ट फोर पार्ट फाइव एंड पार्ट सिक्स सो मोस्टली द एवरेज द टाइमिंग इज ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स फॉर ईच वीडियो इज देयर इन ऑल दिस प्ले लिस्ट सो दिस थिंग्स विल बी वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डू चेक आउट दिस सीरीज सो आई विल प्रोवाइड दिस इन द आई बटन एज वेल एज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो बिकॉज आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर दैट क्वेश्चन विल कम फ्रॉम दिस मेगा रिविजन सीरीज येस टू कंटिन्यू दिस वी हैव टेकन सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू कम इन दिस एयर नेट एग्जाम सो लेट स्टार्ट टू दिस क्वेश्चन डिस्कशन so the first question which we are going to deal today will be all these questions will be from the environmental pollution one of the very very important topic so the first question is the death of a river by the environmental pollutants ultimately results from which of the following so i'll wait for certain seconds let us see whether you are able to find the correct option or not then i will reveal the answer so here the correct option will be option number a yes when a river dies so from the environmental pollutants the depletion of oxygen takes place in the river so river mein jab environmental pollutants enter karta hai for example from the sewage water from the agriculture pesticide waste first thing what happens is oxygen level wahan pe deplete ho jata hai after that the algae population grows the fishes die the river dies but it is telling that ultimately results from so it is asking ultimately किस वजह से रिवर का डेथ हो जाता है थ्रू एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूटेंट्स सो ऑप्शन नंबर ए डिप्लीशन ऑक्सीजन विल बी द करेक्ट ऑप्शन सो हियर द कंसेप्ट इज क्लियर कमिंग टू द सेकंड क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एसेसन एंड रीजनिंग काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन द एसेसन स्टेटमेंट स्टेट्स कार्बन मोनोक्साइड कैन कंट्रीब्यूट टू द फोटोकेमिकल स्मॉग प्रॉब्लम इन द सिटीज एंड रीजन स्टेटमेंट में है इट एड्स इन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सरफेस ओजोन सो हियर from one question if your two concepts are clear then you will be able to answer this question and the answer is very simple that both assertion and reason statement are correct and reason is the correct explanation of a but you should know the two very important concepts behind this question that first is photochemical smog so photochemical smog how it is formed it is formed from the phone yes i have already said in a previous videos that phone is the composition of photochemical smog that means pan from p it coming the pan peroxyacetyl nitrate then coming to the h that is hydrocarbon o is ozone and n is the oxides of nitrogen nitrogen dioxide so this phone is the mixture which is causing the photochemical smog so now we will know how the surface ozone is formed so surface ozone that is present in the tropospheric ozone which is bad ozone how it is formed it is formed when the nitrogen oxides carbon monoxide and volatile organic compounds that are vocs react in our atmosphere in the troposphere region in the presence of sunlight so it is important so all these gases when they combine in the presence of sunlight they give rise to surface ozone which is a very very harmful pollutant and now the question was asking carbon monoxide contributes to photochemical smog how because carbon monoxide forms the ozone and ozone forms the photochemical smog so in this way carbon monoxide contributes to the photochemical smog so i hope you are able to understand carbon monoxide ozone create karta hai and ozone is responsible for the photochemical smog so let's move to the next questions so it will be very interesting i hope you all will be noting down all these things so let's read a question the question is which of the following power plants releases radioactive material as well as hazardous metals such as lead and arsenic under normal operating condition so i'll wait for certain seconds then i'll reveal the answer so if the video is not clear then you can change the quality of the video in 240 pixel or 360 
so the correct option will be option number d yes from the coal based thermal power plants when these are working jahan pe coal ka istemal hota hai power generation ke liye thermal power plants mein wahan se hazardous metals are released such as lead and arsenic coming to the next question next question is from the marine pollution the question is marine pollution is caused by which of the following and here we have to choose the correct code and here the correct option will be option number c yes all these four are the causal for the marine pollution that is sewage which is dumped untreated and given inside the marine body coming to the land runoff oil spills from the cargoes and ships ocean mining also releases toxic substances which causes marine pollution so all these four are the reason for the marine pollution chalte hai hamare agle question ki taraf next question is waste water testing relies on the detection of certain indicator organisms known as what so this is one of the frequent asked questions in the environmental science entrances i hope you all will be able to answer option correct will be option c coliform are the bacteria which are indicator organism that means in a waste water where it is sampled if it contains coliform bacteria then it will detect that there is certain pollution in the waste water they are the indicator organism and what is the technique to count this coliform in the water present so the counting procedure is mpn technique so what is this technique most probable number technique from where you can detect that how much quantity of coliforms are present in the water let's move to the next slide here again a assertion and reasoning question is coming up so let's read the assertion statement the assertion statement states sound barrier alongside the motorways in urban areas are very effective in controlling noise and the reason states they act as reflectors of sound back into the motorways and upwards so think about the correct option and here the correct option will be option number c yes sound barriers jo use hote hain motorways mein in urban areas they are to control the noise pollution but the reason statement stated that they act as reflectors of sound which is absolutely wrong so reason is false because these sound barriers they act as absorbers for the sound yes they absorb the sounds as a result they control the noise so they are not the reflectors of sound they are the absorbers of sound so this is very simple things if you analyze the question you will be able to answer it next question is also one of the frequent asked question the question is the effect of sulfate aerosol in the earth's atmosphere is to do what and here the correct option will be option number c yes they cool the global climate so they are not the global warming gases the sulfate aerosol helps in global climate of cooling the earth so they are the global coolant also they are called as but before proceeding to the next question let us assume that why this sulfate aerosol cool the global climate because unlike carbon dioxide methane and water they are not absorbing the radiation from the sunlight they are radiating the sunlight yes they are not absorbing and re-radiating into the earth atmosphere so they are reflecting back the earth's radiation energy as a result the heat is escaped and the cooling takes place So now it's time for the next question the next question is which of the following reactions or actions may be recommended for an acidified lakes so here acidified lakes means lakes jiska acid content zyada hai the ph is in between 1 to 6 so that are highly acidic lakes so here the correct option will be option number b yes liming is the technique or process which is recommended for treating the acidified lakes yes acidified lakes as we know they are rich in acid so in order to cancel the acid effect or to neutralize the acid condition liming process is used so what is this liming process that is very simple addition of limestone so liming the word lime so addition of limestone that is calcite primarily composing of calcium carbonate that is coco3 is used to treat the acidic water as well as acidic soil so this is very important kindly no doubt liming process limestone calcite or calcium carbonate 
let's move to the next slide next slide is also consisting of very important question the question is according to the central pollution control board the annual average concentration of particulate matters of 2.5 size should not exceed which of the following concentration and here the correct option will be option number b yes particulate matter 2.5 should not exceed 40 microgram per meter cube value according to the cpcb standards and easy way to remember is that 2.5 multiplied by 40 gives us 100 so you have to be 100 percent sure for this question for particulate matter 2.5 so simple thing is 2.5 multiplied by 40 will give 100 so like this you can remember Next is which of the following is a secondary aerosol? Options are pollens, viruses, sodium chloride and ammonium sulphate. So here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, ammonium sulphate is not the secondary aerosol. So first of all, what are secondary aerosols? So when the primary aerosols which are released in the atmosphere, they combine together, they form the secondary aerosol like secondary air pollutant similarly secondary aerosol but this pollens the viruses sodium chloride all are released as primary aerosol so they are not secondary but ammonium sulfate is the mixture of ammonia sulfate so that's why it is a secondary aerosol now the next question is in the colorimetric determination of ambient sulfur dioxide by waste geek method the absorbance of the colored complex should be measured at which of the following wavelengths So here the correct option will be option number A at 550 nanometer the observance of the sulfur dioxide with the help of waste geek method should be done and it is also important to note down that sulfur dioxide is measured through the waste geek method it is also asked in the examination kindly note it down. Next question is coming from the BOD that is very very simple question but yet very very conceptual. The question is the biochemical oxygen demand which is BOD of water indicates what? So I will give you a little more time to analyze this question. So here the correct option will be option number D all of the above. Yes, some of you will be thinking that it says the presence of organic material in the water that can be oxidized by microorganism. It is correct. But this question says the BOD of water indicates what? So from BOD we can say what is the water quality. If the BOD is high, the water quality is very poor. If the BOD is less, then water quality is very good. And it also indicates the amount of oxygen removed from the water by aerobic respiration. So all these three are very very correct statement which indicates the BOD of water. The next question is which one of the following protozoan is related to the water borne diseases so it is coming from the water pollution and here the correct option will be option number b yes antimoeba histolytica is related to the water borne diseases this causes amoebiasis so you should note down amoebiasis is caused by antimoeba histolytica which is a water borne disease next question is the presence of ammonia in groundwater may indicate a nearby what so a nearby thermal power plant or nearby coal mine nearby municipal solid waste or nearby granite quarry so here the correct option will be option number b yes when nearby municipal solid waste is present then this the ammonia will seep into the groundwater and it will cause the water pollution Let's move to the next question. The next question is from the atmospheric brown clouds which are also called as ABCs and the question is the principal constituents of atmospheric brown clouds are what? So here the correct option will be option number D. All these things that is soot, soil dust, fly ash, sulphate and nitrates all these are the composition which form the atmospheric brown clouds so option d will be the correct option now it's time for the next question next question is the famous london smog was observed in which of the following years 
and this is a very important concept that is London smog, Los Angeles smog. I have already made a separate video on this. You can check the link in the i button. And for this, the answer will be 1952. The London smog was observed, and Los Angeles smog was observed in the year 1943. So you should note down Los Angeles 1943. Now, permissible limit, which is also very very important. You should know the permissible limit of daytime industrial noise as recommended by WHO is what? So here the correct option will be option number B 75 decibel is the recommended sound level for the industrial region for the daytime. So you should know this so quickly we will know this and this is given by actually the noise pollution control and regulation rule of 2000 you should note down noise pollution and regulation control rule was formed in the year 2000 under which provision under the provision of environmental protection act of 1986 for different areas and here you should know that for industrial area daytime the limit of noise should not exceed 75 decibel night time should not exceed 70 decibel similarly for commercial area it is 65 for day 55 for night time for residential area it is 55 decibel for daytime 45 decibel for night and silence zone should be within 50 decibel in daytime and 40 decibel during night time so this is very very important i hope you would have learned this but again we have to revise let's move to the next questions so the question are on your screen the question is cfcs have a continuing effect on the ozone layer as they do what so read every option carefully and here the correct option will be option number d yes cfcs are having the chlorine atoms so the chlorine atoms present in the cfc formed by them formed by the cfc act as catalyst in the reaction in the ozone layer causing the degradation of the ozone yes how because a single chlorine atom can degrade thousands of ozone molecule throughout its lifetime and it is continuously degrading the ozone so this will be the correct option option number d so it is asking continuous effect so the chlorine atom continuously degrades the ozone layer by going from one ozone to another ozone it detaches the singlet oxygen so this is also important ozone concept i have already made you can check in the i button that is also sure shot question coming to the next question the protocol which decided to completely phase out the chlorofluorocarbon is what so here the correct option will be Montreal Protocol was the protocol which was decided to completely phasing out the CFCs and these protocols are very very important. I am repeatedly saying one question will be definitely there from any of these protocols and I have already made a PDF related to important environmental conventions and protocol. You can check the PDF from the telegram group. Now coming to the next question. Next question is surplus of atmospheric carbon dioxide that means maximum or excess of atmospheric carbon dioxide causes an increase in the greenhouse effect so we all know carbon dioxide excess causes the increase in greenhouse effect as carbon dioxide does what so how this carbon dioxide increases the greenhouse effect so here the correct option will be option number a yes carbon dioxide is opaque to infrared yes Opaque means you should be knowing transparent, translucent and opaque. So opaque are the objects from which the light or rays cannot pass through. So they absorb the light and rays. So carbon dioxide in case it is the opaque thing, opaque gas which blocks the infrared radiation. As a result the heat is stored here and again reflected back to our earth surface causing the increase in the temperature which is the greenhouse effect causing global warming. So I hope you are able to understand this carbon dioxide opaque hai, absorb kar leta infrared and then it re-emits to the earth atmosphere causing the increase in greenhouse effect. So I hope you have learned something new from here and it was very interesting for you. If you like this don't forget to comment and subscribe the channel to get all further updates. So all the best for your preparation don't panic and whatever you are preparing be sure that yes the questions will be coming from that only. So see you guys in our next video.